the third of seven of January. Good morning. Welcome to our Thursday communion. No notices. Sunday this week, actually, I'll tell you because I was just thinking I better. Sunday, 10.30, stream service at St. Francis from St. Andrews. And Sunday evening, normal bits and pieces here I think we're probably going to do something a bit different might be a BCP might be I don't know yet the world is my oyster so good morning to those here and good morning to those wherever you are a moment 
The Lord be with you, and also with you, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And one second, I just realised. That moment when you realise you need to make sure that people here can see what we're we're doing as well. So uh, technology is a wonderful thing when you remember to turn it on and make it happen. But hopefully, all good. Great. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, "The first commandment is this." Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Therefore let us confess our sins. God be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of all the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Grateful for the glory revealed to today through God made flesh, let us pray. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to the readings. The reading is taken from the first letter of John, chapter 3, 22 to 4, verse 6. We receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. What he commands is that we believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as Christ commanded us. Those who obey God's commands live in union with God, and God lives in union with them. And because of the spirit that God has given us, we know that God lives in union with us. My dear friends, do not believe all who claim to have the spirit, but test them to find out if the spirit they have comes from God. For many false prophets have gone out everywhere. This is how you will be able to know whether it is God's Spirit. Anyone who acknowledges that Jesus Christ came as a human being has the Spirit who comes from God. 
But anyone who denies this about Jesus does not have the Spirit from God. The Spirit that he has is from the enemy of Christ. You heard that it would come, and now it is here in the world already. But you belong to God, my children, and have defeated the false prophets, because the Spirit who is in you is more powerful than the spirit that in those who belong to the world. Those false prophets speak about matters of the world, and the world listens to them because they belong to the world. But we belong to God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever does not belong to God does not listen to us. This then is how we can tell the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Gospel comes from Matthew chapter 4 verses 12 to 17. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he went away to Galilee. He didn't stay in Nazareth, but went to live in Capernaum, a town by Lake Galilee, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was done to make true what the prophet Isaiah had said. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, on the road to the sea, on the other side of the Jordan, Galilee, land of the Gentiles. The people who live in darkness will see a great light. On those who live in the dark land of death, the light will shine. From that time, Jesus began to preach his message. Turn away from your sins, because the kingdom of heaven is near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, we thank you for your revealed Messiah, Jesus. We thank you also for the indwelling of your spirit. May we be inspired by him this morning to listen, to receive, to understand and to obey. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So yesterday we celebrated the Feast of the Epiphany, Twelfth Night, Christmas coming to an end for those of us in Western culture, for people in Eastern cultures. Yesterday was Christmas Day, the day when we celebrate the coming of the Christ, the coming of the Messiah, the coming of God made flesh to live among us. And so now for the next four weeks we're in this season of Epiphany. And during this season, our readings reflect on Jesus being revealed, on that epiphany, those epiphany moments when people go, oh, wow, that's who he is. I understand now when Christ is revealed. And I was once asked a few years ago by someone if, um, as a member of a clergy house, was I able to get much out of Christmas or was it just too busy? to be able to really reflect on the meaning of Christmas and get something spiritually from it. And I said to her, actually, I much prefer Epiphany to Christmas. Christmas is great, don't get me wrong, I love Christmas. My waistline doesn't, but we're working on that. But Epiphany, this season when Christ is revealed and time and again we have these readings where somebody goes, oh my goodness, I've just realised who this man is. And that really is the essence of our faith. 
those moments when we realize again, when we come to that realization again for ourselves, who Jesus is and what it means that he became flesh and became one of us. And those moments when we're able to see other people make that connection for the first time, there's nothing quite like it. Someone joining the dots, the light bulb switching on. And yesterday, the Feast of the Epiphany is about the Gentile world making that realization of being introduced to that knowledge. As the Magi come, they represent the Gentile world, the non-Jewish world, who came and found the Messiah and worshipped him and took the message back throughout the world that he had come. And Paul's words that that was always God's plan, his secret purpose now revealed, because it had been assumed for generations that the Messiah, when he came, would come only for the Jews. Gods in the ancient Near East were thought to be territorial, to belong to a geographical area or to be belong to a people group. But this God, our God, is the God of the whole world and reveals himself to the whole world in his Son, in himself made flesh, come into the world as one of us. So Epiphany is, for me, a very significant and a very joyful time in the church's calendar. A time when I really get excited about the faith that we share. About the God who came and lived among us in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, which had once been part of the Northern Kingdom, the ten tribes that occupied the Northern Kingdom, and had been, that kingdom was destroyed long before Judah. And so the Jews that were left were the descendants of Judah. And they had spread back up into those northern territories. But they were still considered to be Gentile ter territory. They were on the outskirts. And Jesus, we're told, went and lived in those areas. Went and lived not in the centre in Jerusalem, not in the centre of religious thought, religious worship, not where the temple was, but in the outskirts, in the area where he'd grown up, not in the town where he'd grown up, because we know that he wasn't received so well there, but in the area where he'd grown up, which was to the north and a bit looked down upon by those who lived more centrally. Jesus is always there in the outskirts. Jesus is always there in the minority areas and the areas that are perhaps looked down upon. Because Jesus is the Lord of all people, not just of one group, not just those of us who go to church, not just those of us who sing our canticles or Gregorian chant or hymns, ancient and modern, not just those of us who have guitars and modern worship and appear to be, in our own eyes, more relevant to the world than anybody else. Jesus is the God of all people. He comes to all people. He comes for all people. No one is left out. But Paul warns us in his reading, John, sorry, warns us, that there will be false gospels, that there will be false teaching, and there will be those who claim to be of God, but are not of God. And he gives us a simple test. How do we know if someone is of God or not of God? And it all revolves around Jesus. If someone accepts who Jesus is, accepts that Jesus is God made flesh, the Son of God, then he is, they are, a Christian. They are of God. They are listening to God. It doesn't matter what else they do. It doesn't matter what, how they worship. 
What matters is simply that they have received that revelation, that they've had that epiphany moment. Oh my goodness, I know now who this is. And I'm going to follow him. I accept the God who came and lived among us. So if you're wondering this morning, are you a Christian? If you're wondering this morning, is somebody else a Christian? Because they do things differently to you. That's the simple test. Do they acknowledge who Jesus is? That he is God made flesh, the son of God, who came and gave his life for everyone. No one is too far. No one cannot be reached by the love and the salvation of God. So let's live in that joy in these times of dissent, in these times of separation, in these times of conflict that we see in our world, even in nations that we tend to think of as civilised. We are seeing them fall apart, tear themselves apart because of differences, because we want to think about and focus on what separates us rather than what brings us together. And John says simply, you know if you're God's, if you can claim Jesus, that's all it takes. There's no other test. There's no other reason. So let's live together in that unity. Let's live together. And let's strive together to help this world find those epiphany moments. Find that God who came and lived as one of us who died for us, who gave himself willingly to us. Let's take up that example and give, each other, give ourselves to each other. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came as a man and lived among us, lived among the people on the margins, on the outskirts. Not the ruling classes, but the working classes. Not the great and the good, but those who may have been looked upon looked down upon. Lord, you revealed yourself and you still reveal yourself today to anyone who will come. Help us to play our part in making you known by living the lives that you've called us to, by being faithful to that calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. So let us, using the words of the creed, declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us come before the Lord with the things that are on our hearts and minds, the things that burden, the things that challenge, and the things that bless. Father God, we pray for the work of the church throughout the world. As Epiphany is upon us, the church is set free in that last stage of the birth story. The church is enabled by the knowledge of who Christ is for the world. The church is empowered by a message that brings the light into all near and far off. And so, Father, we pray for ourselves that we may know, that we may nurture, that we may grow in our faith, and that we might shine as lights in the world, that we who are an incarnate expression of the love of God before those we see, that we might Make your name, your salvation, your reconciliation and relationship with the whole world known, person by person, step by step, act by act. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, after a terrible night, a terrible day in America, people are dead, buildings and offices have been trashed, and at last, as Biden is confirmed, as Biden wins the last two seats to give him power in the upper and lower house, Father, we, we pray now that peace, healing, reconciliation might come. And as Trump apparently acknowledges that it's time for him to walk away, that there is nothing left, Lord, may the lies cease, the claims of stolen elections and dodgy dealings. Father, America's biggest fear today is that China and Russia will think that America has become a banana republic. But Lord, if only they were that good. We pray for the nations of the world and their governments, that they would work for unity amongst their nationals and the strangers within their land, that they would work for unity between all faiths, that they would walk and talk with love and justice and humility for the weak, the poor, the marginalised, the oppressed and the broken in their lands. 
So we lay before you the nations of the world. And with the words of the Messiah, the government shall be upon his shoulder, still echoing in our ears. That this day is our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, as our school children in this nation, in this town, as they're told GCSEs and A-levels aren't going to happen this year, it's not down to how much you swapped, it's how much of a swap your teacher thinks you are. As the Institute of Education had a person yesterday saying, it's unfair, but it's all we've got. Father, we pray that there will be justice and we pray that there might be some kindness that where there is doubt, that doubt might be fostered, nurtured and given to the benefit of these children rather than penalise them. And as one who still holds the school record for cane and detention, I know what some of those, no matter how hard they work, will end up with. So, Father, we pray for justice in our education system and we pray for those teachers who are not teaching online but are teaching and caring in schools for they are taking care of the key workers' children. As one said, not so much a teacher, more a nanny now. So, Father, we pray that they would stay safe. The children are still around them and the prospect of catching the virus is still before them. Lord, protect our education system, those who are taught and those who teach at all levels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for our town, its needs, for the shops that are closed again because they're non-essential, and for those who have been writing on the Facebook and social media to say, this was the last straw and to maybe be shut down until the beginning of the next financial year has been too much for so many small shops and too much for so many large shops as Top Shop and Paper Chase and other booksellers are now saying that they have to close stores or close completely to try and make the viability a reality. Father, we pray for those whose jobs, whose incomes, whose livelihood, whose family stability has been affected. We pray for those we know who need to touch from you and for those especially who wear the label handed down by a doctor somewhere that they are terminal. We pray for Maureen Williams and for Kevin and Lizzie and Patsy and for Alan and Bob and Morag and their family and the needs there for Joan. We pray for Larry and for John and for Stan, for Norma, for the members of this church and for the members of the parish churches. We think of Enid and Norman and Sheila and so many others. Father, we have so many needs before us, so many things, so many people, so many needs for which we pray. So in the stillness of where we are, we pray for ourselves and we pray for those now for whom we regularly pray, asking you to be God, to bring your light, your presence, your peace and your love into the lives, hearts realities of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as the numbers of funerals on my system grow, as the undertakers tell me that the pressure is on and the numbers are rising, Father, we pray for all who mourn, especially those families and friends, loved ones of the 1,041 who in the 24 hours up to yesterday evening, the ones leading to that, 
had lost their lives as we now find ourselves in 57,000 dead. As the hospitals have passed breaking point, we pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who will sit by beds this day and this week. For those who won't sit by beds as their loved ones die. And we pray, Lord, that they would rest in peace and rise again in glory. And we look for the day when the Christ returns and the dead are raised. And until then, keep us faithful, keep us active, keep us caring for those who mourn, supporting those who are leaving and showing your love wherever we may. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, behold, everything has become new, for the old has passed away. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. So the old has gone, the new has come. Rest, celebrate, and live in the unity of Christ the unity of his church and the love of God in us and in God. Peace be with you guys. Be blessed. The reality is made real in the breaking of the bread and the outpouring of the wine. For the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. So lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. 
for great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on, on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, the bright splendour whom the nations seek, may we, who with the wise men have been drawn by your light, discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 
Christ our King, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts. Reveal to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Thank you all for being with us. Stay safe, stay warm. And for those who may have come but couldn't clean their windscreens, I don't blame you. Anything we can do to help, we're getting through it. We have got through it thus far. We're here to help. We're family. We will make it. Stay safe, guys. Bless you. Thanks for being with us.